Did you know that according to recent research, students' academic scores in subjects like math were greatly improved when they were able to participate in some form of music education program? Did you know that studies show that students who work with an instrument had less of a discipline issue than those who didn't? And did you know that while listening to music is beneficial, music education provides even more benefit to students? Many students in music education see themselves as more successful simply by being encouraged by their own music accomplishment. Our guest today has a variety of music education programs specifically designed to increase students' enthusiasm for learning, improve their academic achievement, and reduce dropout rates, all while providing music exposure outside of traditional community walls. If you have a student in your household, you'll definitely want to hear the notes that this organization sounds out loud and clear. So grab that pen and paper. We've got music for your ears today. What about my privacy? It's protected. And the music I listen to? Protected. What about how I wear my hair? And the things I say and write? The Constitution protects your rights. It isn't an old, fading piece of paper. It's a living document. The Constitution says there are three branches of government. So we're kind of like the fourth branch of government. We are the future of America. Find out how you can become part of Constitution Day. For me. For all. For real. Constitution Day is every day. Hello and welcome to The Clarion Call. I am Janice Liggins, your host. Joining us today is a delightful guest who thrives in the music industry and has a passion to ensure that our youth have every opportunity to do the same thing. Foundation for the Advancement of Music and Education, affectionately known as FAME, creates opportunities for youth to experience the joys of music and provide them with gifts that last a lifetime. We're delighted to welcome Ms. Tony Lewis, founder and executive director of FAME. Tony, welcome to the show. We are so glad to have you with us. Thank you, Janice. It's a pleasure to be here. It is w awesome to have you because we've been talking for a while yes. over the last year or more. <laughs> And exactly. I've been just watching some of the things that you do. And so we want to share a lot of that with our guests. Wonderful. So tell us, okay. how did fame, how did you come about starting fame? And what caused it? I must start? tell you that music has been a major part of my life, all of my life, ever okay. since I can remember. Uh, I tell everybody, I'm not a musician. However, mm -hmm. music has been a major force in okay. my life. I used to listen to music at all times. And it provided um, focus in my life. So I, I'm, I'm I was trained as a teacher, but I didn't teach. I went to work for the federal government. But the entire time I was working, I knew I had to do something to give back to the youth, mm -hmm. education-wise. So I established FAME. I called a friend. I had been talking to him several times. I'd like to establish this organization. So he says, OK, this is the last time you're going to call me. We're going to establish it today. Oh, we we nice. did it on July 15, 2004. He did, put together the paperwork, took it to Baltimore. And the rest is history. Nice, 2004. nice. Yes. So you're 10 years now. 10 years up. now. We're celebrating 10 years this excellent, July. Excellent. We're excited about excellent. it. Excellent. And I know yes. you have a huge event going on with that, an award celebration. Yes, so. we do. Well, wonderful. Yes, wonderful. It's going to be on July 24th, actually. At the Newton White Mansion. Yes, at the Newton White Mansion. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Now I know that your mission is you want to make sure that you impact youth by giving them access. Yes. Uh, to music. And so we're going to be talking about to your programs and how you give that access. Okay. But also I know that you are a strong advocate for STEM, but you're even Absolutely. a stronger advocate for STEAM, yeah. where they add the A in there. Why is it so important to add the arts into that? Art is so critical. I have no idea how you separate arts from all the other educational curriculum and components. So we are making sure that we keep the arts in the face of all of our uh, political people and other people who can help to keep the arts as a major part of a kid's lives because it helps them with their development. It helps them uh, with all facets 
of their lives. I mean, mm -hmm. whether it's the physical development, the uh, the mental, you can't separate it. So mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we keep it as part of of the, of the entire wonderful. curriculum. Wonderful. Yes. I know you've been busy because over the years, I think over 1,200 students per year. Yes, that's a lot. Yes, uh, within starting the past five years, we've been being able to touch or impact at least 1,200 children directly or indirectly by the, by the programs nice. we're going to talk about. Yes. yes. Well, let's start with those programs. Yes. One of the first ones is the music support that you render to students who are in the local schools. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. One of our major um, goals is to provide, to fill the void for in-school and after-school programs. You know, a lot of the schools no longer provide music, arts, so what we want to do is provide that for them. We have uh, a program called Music is Central at Central High School. This is where we provide instruments, um, repair, we repair their instruments. Wow. We provide uh, professional musicians who actually come into the school after school and actually train the kids on their various instruments. Nice. Yeah, and then at the end of the year, we do a, a community program where they actually get to perform. Uh, perform and so these are these are like music lessons at the school? Yes, music nice. lessons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, music lessons by, um, we have folks like Pieces of a Dream, 76 Degrees West Band, nice. uh, the Rich Payne Trio, they come in and actually work one-on-one -on -one with the youth. I think we have a video clip of your music in this school program. So so we want to try to music support to schools. So let's take a quick look. Okay, great. I got started when I was about four or five years old. Fame is about chance. It's about giving a lot of children out there a chance who think they won't be able to make it, especially in the music field. For seven years, the Foundation for the Advancement of Music and Education, or FAME, has helped high school students develop musically. One, two, you know, do that. This is my voice. When I'm playing it, this is my voice. It has changed from me just trying to write a rap, trying to imitate Eminem, to playing instruments. We want to change lives through music and education because we use the two together. So that's great. That's great. Thank you. Thank to you. To have them right in the school, getting the kind of tutoring, mentoring, and training even. Exactly. Directly. I mean, on your particular instrument. It's really Which is nice. like having private lessons. Yes. Exactly. That's yes, wonderful. Mm -hmm. And within that program, this music in schools, you also you, uh, offer scholarships and grants to students? Yes, we do. We have students um, who are in college and um, who need <laughs> monies for books. Sure. I mean, some of the parents are really <laughs> shocked when they go to say, okay, how much are the books going to cost? You, freshmen, they could be expecting maybe a $1,000 for in, the, yes, for the year. And that's an unexpected expense. So sometimes we're able to help our students who've been involved with fame or some of our music or art students mm -hmm. with that support. Scholarship money to pay for tuition. That's very important as well. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. SAT prep as well? Yes, we have a great partner here in Largo, uh, Innovative Study Techniques. Mm -hmm. It was started by a fabulous young lady who is Ivy League trained, was trained here in Prince George's County Public Schools as well, but she made a promise to her grandfather she was gonna come back and make a change in the community. Oh, nice. So we're doing SAT training uh, and tutoring nice. to young people. Nice. Mm -hmm. Another one of your programs is your instrument donation program. Yes. Genesis. Oh my goodness. That is such an awesome program because there are a lot of kids who need to have the instruments to take home. I mean, you need to practice. Yes. You know, practice, practice, practice. Yes. So we've been able to have the people from the community to make donations to us. We've had partnerships with uh, the Bowie State University mm -hmm. where we've been able to purchase beautiful uh, baby grand pianos mm. or they've donated some as well and we've put them out into our public schools nice. and it's making a major difference. Wonderful. Now are we going to move fast because you have a lot of stuff. I want <laughs> yes. to cover it all. Literacy. Okay, you have a wonderful literacy program where you've uh, competed in or had students compete in a couple different spelling bees. Yes, we okay. do. Uh, the Prince George's County has a wonderful spelling bee uh, that is um, led by the Gazette newspaper. Mm -hmm. uh, Doug Hayes is doing a wonderful job there, and we do need more community support for that. Um, that's, by the way, it's happening this March 14th at okay. Clary Smith Performing Arts Center. Okay. And we also partner with the Washington Informer and NBC4, where they do a spelling bee in D.C. for the D.C. youth. Um, our 
good friends over there, um, Ron Burke, mm -hmm. it works that one for us. Mm -hmm. Now, about how many students do you have participate in, in the spelling bees? Wow, I think the finals come to about 20 to 30 students. Nice. But you have several hundred who trying. actually compete, who are trying, <laughs> which is one of those things that really helps with literacy and helping them with their reading. And, right, right, yes, right. And you have a Happy Hearts program with UCAP and yes. working with the homeless. The United Communities Against Poverty, yes. which is a major nonprofit here in Prince George's that's helping uh, young teen mothers and their young children. So we want to take their focus away from the situation that they're in, they're in the home, being homeless, and put it on music or reading, and we get them out to other activities too, taking them out, let them take them outside of their communities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. And then your Family Literacy Day at the theater. Yes. Tell us about that. And we're trying to do more of those. We, we partnered uh, uh, with the Atlas Theater, and uh, we had about 200 kids who came. Oh, nice. From Philadelphia, from really? Montgomery County, and Prince George's County in D.C. We had about 200 where um, the book was called Mirandy and Brother Wind. And the kids read the book. Then they also had an opportunity to speak with the cast afterwards. Yes, wonderful. Yeah, we took over the whole theater one day. I think we have a yeah. quick video of okay. that one as well. Okay. So we're going to take a look at that one too. Super. So let's see that clip. Okay. Foundation for the Advancement of Music and Education Incorporated, FAME, in partnership with the Prince George's Reading Council, sponsored a Family Literacy Day at the historic Atlas Theater in Washington, D.C. Over 200 children experienced the world premiere of Mirandy and Brother Wind, an African-American children's musical. After the show, the cast spoke with the students who were eager to ask questions about how the cast prepared for such a fast-paced production from another time period. From what I saw, it was a very good play, and I'm eager to read the book. I really liked the show. The show was really, really great. We would like to thank FAME for supporting all of the children and bringing us out today. To find out how you can support more activities like these, please visit www.fameorg.org. Wonderful. Wonderful. You're Thank doing you. some good Thank work. You. There's a lot of work to be done, Janice, yes, and we yes. as a community and other nonprofits need to come together yes. and make that happen. Yes. Well, we're going to talk about that one when okay. we're, we're done here. But um, I really love the fact that they get out and exposed yes. to a lot of the performances in theater. So many kids just don't have that at all. Yeah. Some of them don't get outside of four blocks of their home. Right. And uh, with such a rich uh, community that we have in the Washington region, it makes no sense for that to be. And we right. want to make sure that that, is, that exposure is provided to our youth. So between the exposure and getting them out, you're busy that and, and advocating for STEAM and yes. you know, a lot of the spelling bees and yes. a lot of the other things. Mm -hmm. um, what's been your driver? Hmm. I guess just knowing that the children, that the need is so great and that we as Americans should be much further along as, as far as education. Mm -hmm. Education is extremely important. It's, it's a necessity. Yes. I don't know how we do without it. So that's, that's, right. that's my main driver, that's right. to get the children educated. Well, on that note, yes. we're going to take another break. Okay. Okay. Uh, coming up, we'll continue our conversation with FAME as we talk about the impact of the community outreach efforts they're doing. And we'll also learn about experiences of a few former students in their summer music program. So stay tuned. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition.
We are continuing our discussion with the Foundation for the Advancement of Music and Education, affectionately known as FAME. Joining Tony Lewis, founder and executive director of FAME, are two of her former students now turned professional recording artists, Ignatius Perry and Reginald Payne, both of Tribe Inc. Welcome, gentlemen. We welcome you to join Tony on the show. Thank you. Good Thank to have you. you. Tony, I want to first ask you though, you have a, one of your programs is considered a, the summer um, music program. Yes. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that. Yes, one of the things we wanted to do was to provide some really creative opportunities for young folks during the summer mm -hmm. to keep those musical skills up to date, keep them out of trouble a little bit too. Okay. Um, and so we started in 2010 partnering with the University of Maryland School of Music, mm -hmm. and we did very well. We started with 17 students, uh, and, and then in 2012, we went with Bowie State Universities. They have the Fine and Performing Arts Center, mm -hmm. and we added tw 20 there. So um, we this year, we probably, hopefully, will have about 100 students. That is, that is our goal well, nice. between the two schools. Now, so the, the two different schools, programs, yes. are they similar? Very similar, okay. although they have different names. They're both uh, music technology based. Uh, music technology and music theory, we're very strong on that because we want the students to be able to read the music and have exposure to college campus. We deliberately go put them on college campuses because we want them exposed Get accustomed to accustomed to that. Wonderful. Accustomed to being at a college, yes, yes, and, yes, and start putting that in their brains. Exactly, exactly. Yes. And I notice you start as young as eighth grade with that program. Yes, long, long eighth grade, rising eighth graders yes. through twelfth grade. Nice. Yes, it's very nice. Yes. Excellent, excellent opportunity for exposure. Yes. There's a couple organizations that I'm aware of that that are working in that middle school level to make sure that they get exposed. So. I can, we can look into that. If I'd there love are any that. that have music inclinations, yes. then that's another way. Yes, we do partner with some other uh, nonprofits, uh, uh, Concerned Men, Concerned Black Men, mm -hmm. um, tra the Training Source. They yes. all, we could use some of their students as well. Okay. Yeah, so there's, there's some cross uh, pollination there with the students. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. And now uh, the musicians that are joining you on set, um, Tribe. That's a very interesting name. So Ignatius, why don't you tell us, um, how did the name originate? Well, originally it was an acronym for all of the members in the group. Uh, oh. Our original drummer, Tyron Sampson, that would be the T. Reginald Payne is our bass player. My name is Ignatius Perry, and I'm the pianist. And our saxophonist, his name is Brian Forehand. So all together, we uh, just missing one little letter, so we <laughs> added the E on. Yeah. It also kind of signifies a sense of community. Yes. You know, and um, we're just a community of musicians all aiming to progress music and progress ourselves as artists as well. Very good. And so what sparked you guys coming together? Reggie, how did, what sparked it? Well, we started out um, all when we were younger. Um, younger in various, meaning? As in high school. Okay. Well, high school age. Uh -huh. We, I met pretty much all the band members various ways, you know, through competitions, fame, other organizations, okay. and um, just, you know, seeing each other around. So I, when I came back home from college, I decided that I wanted to put a group together. So I just called up all my old friends and nice. we all got together nice. and, and we made it happen. Nice. Now, we were talking at break, uh, where, were, where did you go to school? Berkeley College of Music. Wonderful. And you said you loved it. Yes, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's paying off, huh? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and Ignatius? I went to Peabody. Nice. Yes, ma'am. Very nice. Baltimore. No wonder you guys are so good. <laughs> well, we're going to get a little clip of that music. Um, I, well, I've heard it. I'll say it that way. I've heard it. I don't think we have a clip today, but I've heard it anyway, and it's good. Thank good you so stuff. much. Thank good you. Good stuff. Um, how did the two of you come together? Oh, um, we were actually participating in our high school choirs. Reggie went to Duval, I went to Oxon Hill. Okay. And uh, we met for the first time, I believe, at adjudication, I guess the countywide, not really competition, we kind of see it as a competition. <laughs> you get up there and do as best you can. Um, but yeah, the adjudication festival, and I met Reggie, he was playing bass for Duval, and I was playing piano for Oxon Hill. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, we've just always been friends. That helps. Great. That helps, yes. Um, now, 
You're participating in fame. You, you started off in fame. How did the participation in fame uh, prepare you? Well, for fame, what you're doing oh, now. Sorry. No? <laughs> fame has a lot of programs that really help to not only prepare you as a musician, but prepare you to, if you decide to be a musician, as you know, do music as a career, know exactly what avenues you have. It, it exposes you to that, and it also exposes you to the music education. It gives you, um, you know, access to teachers and access to just individual good examples of people who have made a career out of doing music and you know we see a, enough bad examples every day mm -hmm. and it's just nice to have somebody actually making an effort to bring good examples to you Wonderful. and you know develop you into being one of those good examples Wonderful. as well. What about for you Reggie? Well for, for me fame this helps. is How did fame for me is it's the way it reaches out and and it's helped a lot of the PG County schools. Mm -hmm. And we all, even all my friends, the whole band has gone to PG County schools mm -hmm. in general. And fame has made an opportunity for us to get, you know, new instruments, things like that that we normally wouldn't be able to receive. Nice. You know, we have a hard time getting funding now. They're doing a lot of funding. Mm -hmm. You know, they got new buildings, but when we were there, we, we didn't even have AC. So, <laughs> so you know, it was a blessing to, yes. to have organizations like Fame yes. that will always, you know, come through when you thought your instrument was broke, you know, they come through, fix it, nice. you know, and, and so we appreciate it. Very good. And you know, what's good about that is, um, you know, it's, that's really grassroots. That's really at the level where the need is. Mm -hmm. You know, when your instrument gets busted, then mm -hmm. what are you going to do? So that's that's really sweet. And you guys are already producing uh, CDs and performing, and and have developed a new uh, mode of music at Modern Fusion. What does that mean? What is that all about? Describe well, it. Well, Modern Fusion is is really our all of our experiences, whether it be music. Um, other music genres that we're, you know, we grew up in PG County, so we hear a lot of R&B mm -hmm. and, you know, go-go and all that stuff. So we, we decided to also include that into our, you know, fusion. Okay. You know, a lot of the more modern genres like uh, hip-hop and rap and, mm -hmm. you know, don't necessarily have these genres included. So okay. we created our own to include them. Okay, and uh, when you got your first CD prepared, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what was that experience like? Uh, I know you're excited, but... Uh, yes, ma'am, we're very excited. Um, uh, Reggie and I, uh, well, I guess the whole band decided that we wanted to do a CD, so we've been, we had been practicing and writing songs. Uh, the majority of the songs that made it onto this record are written between, by Reginald and myself, okay. excuse me. So there's 13... Uh, 13 original songs. Um, they're all a different style of modern fusion. Some have more of a hip-hop feel, some feel Latin, some have okay. classical elements, and that's nice. the modern fusion thing we okay. try to tie it all together. Okay. So let's just um, ask this one last question. Um, you still help fame? Yes, ma'am. Why? Um, <laughs> well, fame did so much for me personally. Um, Aside from an, uh, an award or a scholarship to help me go to Peabody and, and finance some of my education there, um, they've also given back to something that I gave a lot of my time and, and my heart and effort to, which was Oxen Hill High School Ox Vocal Music Department. You nice. know, okay. We really, really helped, or I helped a lot there. They help out a lot, and they're really pushing and making sure that the students there had the same opportunities that I have now, Excellent. if not better ones. And they've also, you know, brought us back in to help provide good examples for, for those kids there. Very and, good. you know, that really helped me. Mm -hmm. That encouraged me. So I'm, I'm glad we're getting the opportunity to do it Wonderful. for them as well. Wonderful. What about you, Reggie? And for me, it's, as a teacher, I'm a private instructor now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, organizations. Music? Private music? Yes. Oh, wonderful. Yes. So organizations like FAME, having been a former student, now, you know, a teacher in addition to, you know, the recording artist side, you know, uh, organizations like FAME mean a lot to me because I, you know, teaching something that I'm passionate sure, about. Sure. And so if, if 
you know, we don't keep organizations like Fame around to, to keep music in the schools. One, that's, you know, I'm out of a job, <laughs> of course. And, you know, but besides that, you know, I, I really do love teaching. Wonderful. And I love the kids being able to grow. Okay. Now, um, Tony, I know that your summer program uh, encompasses a lot of um, technology. Yes. In, in the training and, and the instruction, and the kids actually get to produce their, their CD and MP3, even in your group? Even in our group. We, nice. we, we take them into the studio, they do the vocals, uh, they also do the, they use the Sibelius Pro Tools and all the other software to actually create the music. Nice. And they get to put it in the cloud so other folks can get a chance to listen to it. As a matter of fact, we have a lot on our website that people can see as well. Nice. Yes. So that's early exposure to actually yes. producing your own product, mm -hmm. right. if you will. Yeah, nice. we also introduce them to the legal aspects of music. We're going to be bringing in an attorney this year to talk to them mm -hmm. about that okay. as well. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to jump ahead here a little bit because you, we've got so much more I want to talk about. Because um, I know the social media is part of that, but you just yes. mentioned the cloud. Mm -hmm. But uh, we also want to um, take a look at um, your community outreach. Well, before we go that, there's, there's um, student increases in your program um, from 2010, 17. Yes. 2011-34. Yes. 2012-54. Yes. And 2013-74. Yes. What drove that increase? I think uh, communications with the school system. We have good, great relationships with the um, uh, Prince George's County Schools, uh, Ms. Anita Lambert, who's in charge of the Creative Arts Program there. Mm -hmm. So we work very closely with them to identify students, one, who can appreciate the music, and two, who could gain the most from an experience okay. like this. So let's take a quick clip of your video summer music program. Great. Okay? I think this camp's a wonderful opportunity for the students because they get to be immersed in a technologically rich environment. I've learned how to use GarageBand to its fullest oh, it. potential, yeah. and Pro Tools is incredible. The program here at University of Maryland is really fun because it's a good way to get exposed to some new things, like songwriting and editing and being in the studio. I learned a lot about producing and editing using synthesizers and different tools on the computer. What I like most about the program is the different softwares we can use and the amount of knowledge that we get about them. I also like how we can learn how to use the keyboard and the piano and how everything just works together on the computer. Wow, wonderful, wonderful summer program. Sonia, you're doing great work with all of the community, but you also have community outreach efforts yes. that you're working on. Tell us about mm -hmm. that. One way for us to get into the community so they understand the importance of music is to bring our children there along with professional musicians. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, events such as the Bridge of the Musical Spectrum where we have, actually have our youth perform with professional musicians on the stages at Clary Smith. Oh, wow. Yes, we nice. also participated in the opening of the Tanker Outlets. Uh, we have Music at the Mansion, which is at the Newton White, yes. where the children get a chance to, to dance, Great to sing. Yes, Great along with it. Great exposure. Yes. Okay. And now you have participated in what a phenomenal, a phenomenal opportunity in the use to help set a Guinness World record? Yes, we now, did. Now tell us about that. Yeah, Arena Stage came to us and said, we're looking for a nonprofit to work with us to um, to break the Guinness Book of Records. Okay. And I said, okay. <laughs> Wonderful. And we did that fairly quickly. We registered 500 some um, trombonist. Okay. Uh, we had 360 some come and uh, we broke the record. Well, wonderful. At, at We've got a quick clip to take a look at that. Tony, we're going to close out with that, but thank you guys for coming on thank the you. show. Let's thank take you. a quick look at that clip okay. that we're talking about. Guinness World Record. Hi everyone, I'm out here in front of Nationals Park in Washington, D.C. in the midst of thunderstorms, torrential downpours and even tornadoes in the area. Largest trombone ensemble. It's a world record attempt to break the record set in 2010. Today we hope to have well over 500. Let's go inside and see what this is all about. Congratulations on your 
Thank you, thank you, thank you everyone for tuning in and joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the show. Please be sure to check back with us as we bring you more opportunities to find out about what our nonprofits are doing in our community. We hope you enjoyed the show. Again, thanks for joining us. Blessings to you.